In the annals of crime, certain cases stand out for their sheer horror. One such case is that of Gregory Scott Hale. A chilling tale of heinous acts and twisted psychology that left a community in shock and forever changed. Hale's case is not just a simple story of crime and punishment. It's a disturbing exploration into the depths of the human psyche. It forces us to question what drives a man to commit such unspeakable acts? How does one's upbringing shape their future? Can we ever truly understand the mind of a criminal? This journey into the dark corners of criminal psychology isn't for the faint of heart. It's a stark reminder of the evil that can lurk beneath the surface, hidden behind the mask of ordinary life. But it's also a cautionary tale, a lesson in the importance of vigilance, awareness and understanding. Join us as we unravel the chilling tale of Gregory Scott Hale. To understand the man, we delve into his past. Born in the heartland of America, Gregory Scott Hale's early life was unremarkable. Raised in a seemingly average household, his childhood was characterized by the usual ups and downs, joys and sorrows. Yet beneath the surface of normalcy, there were signs of a darker undercurrent. As Hale grew older, he began showing signs of deviant behavior. He was often described as a loner, preferring the company of his own thoughts to that of his peers. Frequent episodes of unprovoked aggression became a part of his persona, alarming those who crossed his path. His fascination with the macabre was another red flag. He was drawn to the grotesque and the morbid, an obsession that was both unsettling and indicative of deeper psychological issues. While these signs may seem glaring in hindsight at the time, they were often dismissed or overlooked. After all, adolescents often go through phases of rebellion and eccentricity. However, these were not mere phases for Hale. They were the first glimpses into the darkness that lurked within, a darkness that would eventually consume him. His early adulthood was marked by a steady descent into a world of twisted fantasies. He dabbled in the occult, used illicit substances, and displayed an unhealthy interest in death and violence. These were not isolated incidents, but a pattern of behavior that pointed towards a disturbed psyche. Despite these warning signs, Hale managed to evade the radar of law enforcement. His criminal record, if any, was sparse. His deviant behavior was largely confined to his private life, hidden from the prying eyes of the world. But the ticking time bomb of his disturbed mind was waiting to explode. These early signs of deviance, unnoticed or ignored, would later manifest in unimaginable ways. As we delve deeper into the case, we'll see how this seemingly average man transformed into a monster, capable of committing a crime so heinous that it would send chills down the spine of even the most hardened crime enthusiasts. The day that shook the small Tennessee community started like any other. A morning mist rolled over the hills, and the sun began to paint the sky with hues of pink and orange. But beneath this picturesque scene, a horrifying reality was about to unfold. In the quiet town, nestled in the heart of the volunteer state, the residents were blissfully unaware of the monstrous act that had taken place under the cover of darkness. Yet, as the day wore on, a chilling discovery would shatter their tranquility. Hale shockingly confessed that he took the life of Marie Hyder, a mother of six, in a manner most gruesome. But the horror doesn't stop there. Hale transported Hyder to his parents' home in Tennessee, turning the place of family memories into a scene of unimaginable atrocity. This wasn't a random act of violence. No, Hale was following a blueprint laid out by a figure he idolized the infamous serial killer from the 80s known as the Night Stalker. What's more terrifying is Hale's disturbing obsession with the Night Stalker. He didn't just admire this serial killer, he consumed his manifesto, internalizing its horrendous teachings. He sought to emulate the Night Stalker to such an extent that he even ate parts of his victim's body, a horrific imitation of his role model's deeds. The line between fanatical admiration and horrific imitation was sadly all too blurred in Hale's case. 
But what could possibly motivate someone to commit such an act of unspeakable horror? The local law enforcement was swift to respond. They arrived at the scene, their faces hardened by years of service, yet none were prepared for the horrifying sight that awaited them. The earth was carefully excavated, revealing a grisly tableau that would haunt them for years to come. The remains told a story of unthinkable brutality, an act so savage it defied comprehension. The community was in shock. The tranquility of their small town had been shattered by a crime so gruesome, so disturbing, it seemed impossible. Yet, the evidence was undeniable. Someone among them was capable of such a monstrous act. To attempt to comprehend the incomprehensible, we turn to the expertise of forensic psychologists, who unravel the complex interplay of motive, mindset and circumstance. The psychology of a criminal mind is multifaceted and often rooted in past experiences, societal influences and personal predispositions. In Hale's case, the dark proclivity towards violence and cannibalism didn't arise out of nowhere. Early signs of deviant behavior and an unsettling fascination with death and dismemberment were telltale indicators of a deeply troubled psyche. Hale's online posts, filled with references to cannibalism and occult practices, were not just mere expressions of a morbid curiosity. They were harbingers of the horror that was to come. Forensic psychologists also highlight the role of desensitization, a process that diminishes emotional responsiveness to a negative or aversive stimulus after repeated exposure. In Hale's situation, this could have resulted from his job at a meat processing plant where he was surrounded by death and dissection daily. This environment may have normalized the act of butchering, blurring the line between animal and human, and possibly paving the way for his heinous crime. Psychologists often talk about the slippery slope of deviant behavior. It starts with action on darker impulses that society deems unacceptable, then progressively becomes more severe. For Hale, his slope slid into the unimaginable, the act of cannibalism. But it's important to remember that understanding is not the same as excusing. The intent here is not to justify Hale's actions, but to better grasp the factors that contribute to such extreme criminal behavior in the hope of preventing similar incidents in the future. But it was not just the crime that shocked, it was the disturbing revelation of cannibalism. This case serves as a chilling reminder that the human capacity for evil can sometimes eclipse our worst nightmares.